about the future and what we're doing here. And we've got a special treat. We have the president and CEO of Tech Town sitting right there. <laughs> right there. If you would all join me in welcoming Ms. Leslie Smith to the stage, I would appreciate it. Thank you, Leslie. To express my love for the city of Detroit, I have put together a little story. And that story um, is about me, but more interestingly, my journey and how that journey has impacted the work that I now get to do at Tech Town. And so um, there are some pictures, uh, no words on the slides that will help express the movement through um, my journey. This is one of the um, less wonderful pictures that will show up in my slide presentation, but it was during this event in the city of Detroit that I was born in July of 1967, um, which has always, um, I thought, framed my perspective on the opportunities and challenges that existed in the city in which I was born. We'll find out later that I actually didn't know shit, and I figured it out along the way. Um, but this was the, the very beginning of my life. And like many multi-generational Detroiters, my parents, when I reached high school age, moved us to the suburbs. So um, I can not so proudly say that I was a participant in white flight and um, have only recently come to understand what that means this is the, the neighborhood that I grew up in, and um, it looks very much like the neighborhoods we want to see in the city of Detroit and don't always see, right? Um, fast forward through high school, college, and this career of mine, which keeps bringing me back to this city, um, once as a commercial lender, um, then as a commercial workout person, and then ultimately in my role as the president and CEO of Tech Town, um, which has given me an entirely different perspective on what I thought I knew about my city um, and what my obligations are in the work I do and the things I have to come to know. So as a result of this job, I end up in places. I end up in places like this. I'm not so sure I'm worthy of being in this position, but I am. And so I'll try to say something that um, adds value um, and I'll carry something away from this that will hopefully uh, further inform the movements of my career. So um, I had a place and, a, and an impact in the hallway before I walked in, which I'll share with you um, soon. But one of the places I ended up in the course of my career was the Michigan Black Chamber um, at an event speaking about things that Tech Town could do for the city of Detroit. And I regularly do that. I'm good friends with the chamber. We have lots of resources that can help small businesses across the city. Um, and I was at <clears throat> that particular event, the only white woman in the room. And the presentation was actually from a famous author and PhD about um, structural racism and the role that um, white privilege has played in uh, the history of this country. And he said something that was interesting to me. <clears throat> Excuse me, and he said a lot of things that made me very uncomfortable. But he said, we were arbitrarily assigned a skin color and this series of things occurred to us because of that. And I thought, well, how am I gonna follow this, right? So I got real nervous and sort of depressed and, and, and very um, concerned. But um, I got up and said, hey, um, you know, I was arbitrarily assigned a skin color too and I wanna get smarter about what it is I just heard so that I don't continue to act in an obtuse or uninformed way. A year later, I was at an event in Baltimore called Creating Spaces, where we spent three days, 14 hours a day, kind of unpacking the um, racial tensions and stress in America's inner cities. Now, I don't know why I ended up there. I actually was invited um, by a third party uh, consultant of a foundation, but I was there and I spent um, a couple of days becoming really aware of things that I wasn't aware of. Um, for instance, I had a young black woman who I call a friend asked me, um, have you ever had to train your son how to respond if he gets pulled over by the police? And I said, no. And she said, have you ever thought about whether or not your son will make it until the age of 18? And I said, no. 
And so um, we spent a lot of time kind of talking about that. And I've spent a long, um, not long amounts of time, but a lot of, a lot of energy and spirit um, in and around that topic. I've read voraciously. I'm studying um, for a graduate certificate in, in inclusion and diversity um, and hope that I get smarter about this. But why this all matters as it relates to um, the work we do is because these sensibilities and awarenesses will help us, I think, have real conversations about expanding Detroit's economy. There are very real issues that we face. And um, you know, sometimes we like to throw out terms, scary terms like gentrification and other things um, that I think distract us from the real issue, which is about opportunity and access and, and a place for all people that live in the city to thrive. And so at Tech Town, I was um, challenged regularly by people who live in this great city of ours, people who live outside of the Midtown and Downtown where I actually have a building that um, hosts the, the, the bulk of our work. And they kept asking me, what have you done for me? 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 Um, and we turned that into what can we do for you? And uh, developed a program called SWAT City, which now carries the resources and expertise of our acceleration programs developed in partnership with Wayne State and experts across the entire country to create hyper-local economies in Detroit's neighborhoods. And so we currently have this program running in five neighborhoods. Brightmore, Grandmont, Rosedale, Osborne, Jefferson East, and Hope Village. And we've created, in partnership with community development organizations and the community members themselves, economic strategies, which over the course of the coming three years, we will help them execute by uh, curating in the resources and expertise we have at our fingertips at Tech Town into those neighborhoods in hopes that we will ultimately leave together the opportunities that we see um, in, in the city center out to the edges of the neighborhood. I think the point I'd like to share with you um, is that the opportunity that brought me to Detroit brought me to a new awareness that I hope will change the conversation we're having in Detroit. It has certainly heightened my awareness of the obligation I have based on my color, my background, and my current role to have conversations that not many of us like to have because they're hard, but only by having them and being willing to screw up while having them will we um, find our way to a new reality. Most recently, when I talked about places I end up in, I ended up out at a table with a young lady, um, an African-American woman about to graduate from college, and we had this conversation about what this means for her and what this means for me. And at the end of it, we were both moved um, seven minutes after having met each other to stay connected and continue to try and advance change. We hugged and I came in here to say that every one of these places I show up hopefully informs how I can be a better participant in real change um, and know that along the way I'll make a lot of mistakes, but I do it because I love the city and that's what this is all about today. So thank you for hearing me and being with me and, and sharing this time and space with me. Um, we all love the city, and so um, I'm just blessed to be a part of a community that cares deeply about moving it forward. Thank you, Leslie. I, it's, it's amazing what's going on in just the rebirth and the rejuvenation and the revitalization and, and people like Leslie and people like you all taking a part of it and making a difference.